This is Lindsay Strong with iRecruit and we are going live today on Facebook and also Zoom. So um, we'd like to take you through today 10 useful things that you didn't know you could do in iRecruit. Welcome everyone who's watching now or later. We're going to start with the iRecruit dashboard. And this is the login screen that you see once you've logged into your iRecruit account. Did you know that you could customize this page, the way that it looks, the widgets that it contains, and even the color scheme? So to do that, what you'll do is you'll click on your name on the top right of the screen, go to user profile and settings, and this pulls up the different configuration options. You can add a small profile picture like I have on the top right. And if we scroll down, you can see that you have a whole bunch of dashboard widgets or modules that you can select from. So I like to recommend the quick search for everyone. You can also add in your requisition search and almost any other widget that you see here that might be relevant to you. So sometimes we have applicant status, the latest updates, referral source, and also please note that you can drag and drop these widgets into the place or into the order in which you would like to display them on your dashboard. So let's go ahead and we'll save our widgets. I did mention that you could also change the color scheme, so if you don't like the hot pink that I have here on mine, you can change yours under administration under user and user preferences. And you can change a few things in this section here, but let's take a look at the color scheme first. Uh, let's go from summer, which is our hot pink theme, into iRecruit, which is more of a blue theme color. All right, so save. And if you click on your company name on the top left, it takes us back into our dashboard here. So you can see we have a few new widgets here for requisition search, candidate search, you have your calendar, you can see your applicants by status here, and the status is the workflow within your system. Referral source, how did people hear about that job that you just posted? And iRecruit news and how to contact iRecruit support, usually recommend putting that at the bottom of the screen. So another thing, number two on our useful list is adding video to your career page. Why would you want to do that? Well, number one, it looks great. Number two, it also hel helps with search engine optimization. So if you include a video on your career page, it actually helps people find your career page much faster and much easier. We're going to use our example here. We have an, uh, an iRecruit video and this is on YouTube. So on your video page on YouTube, select share and then select embed. And this is going to give you the code for the video that you'll place on your iRecruit career page. So I'm just going to select it and we're going to copy. And then we can go back into iRecruit We'll go to administration. Now some employers in iRecruit have more than one organization set up. We call that multi-org. My account does actually have that set up for three different companies. Um, we're going to go with the first company over here on the right. We're going to go to our organization description. And just know that as an iRecruit user, this is something that you can update at any time and I do recommend updating it fairly regularly, at least on a monthly basis to keep it fresh and so that your, the search engines who are indexing the page know that it is not something that is static, it gets updated continually. So what you'll do here, let me go back in case you missed that, we clicked on the source code because you can't just copy and paste the code directly into the page. It has to be on the source side of things. So what you'll do here is basically just navigate to where you want the video to appear. 
and I want it to appear above where it says open positions. So we're just going to enter that in here, paste our code and just click on OK. That's going to save it here. It looks grey on the page. That's really just to indicate that we have the video available. Click on the change description button to save that and you have a little preview of what the page looks like here and we can see our new iRecruit video. iRecruit, applicant tracking and electronic onboarding software. All right, so we don't have to watch that entire video, but that's how it is added. So that's number two, how to add video to your career page. Note that you can also do the same on your job descriptions. So if you have um, a particular job that you want to highlight or a role, you can put in a video onto that job description as well. And let's go there actually. Let's go into our requisitions, manage requisitions. And I'll actually just show you how to add the video as well. We have some time here. So edit requisition and then scroll down to the description section. And just like before, like we did on the career page, you're going to click on the source code icon and then place the video, basically copy and paste that video code where you want the video to be displayed on the page. Scroll down all the way to the bottom, click on update requisition. And this one will also have that video right here on the screen. All right, so number three, did you know you could sponsor your jobs within iRecruit? So we do have ZipRecruiter, Indeed and Monster right on e the top of every requisition section. If you go ahead and you click on Advertise Requisition, you can choose to post to these websites for free, but you can also sponsor them as well. So what the sponsorship option does is it gives your position more visibility. So for example, ZipRecruiter, we'd want to choose a short application and then choose the category of the position as well. ZipRecruiter has a massive network of hundreds of job boards, um, as we can see here. So if you choose to sponsor that position, you're going to massively increase the visibility that your job has and hopefully attract more candidate, more qualified candidates, shall we say, as well. The same with Indeed. Indeed has the option you can choose a short application as well. So a short application. With COVID-19, you can also differentiate if you're allowing your workers to work from home fully remotely or if it's only on a temporary basis you can indicate that right here. Just like with ZipRecruiter to sponsor the job on Indeed you're going to select post to Indeed sponsored right here. You'll select your budget. If these numbers don't look good to you no worries you can select a specific number and add that in here into this box. You're using your Indeed account information at this point so you can sponsor the job using your Indeed information. Um, just click on sponsor the job on Indeed and our job will be posted there for the duration of up to 30 days or until you decide to take that position down. You can also sponsor on Monster as well if you have a Monster account. So number four, one of the useful tools that iRecruit has also with respect to the job posting itself, each job posting can be customized with this option, is that you can auto forward any applicant information in real time to your hiring manager or to yourself or to a specific inbox that you would like to deliver candidate information to. So to do that, for any of your open positions, select the Auto Forward tab right here. Select who is going to be the recipient for the candidate information. By the way, you can also update a specific status. So instead of the applicant being listed as new, they could be listed as sent to hiring manager. 
and then you're going to select what you want to actually send to the manager. So application, yes, of course, you want to send that. Applicant history. To be honest, I always leave the history of because there's no history at this point when we just have a brand new requisition. So I would leave that one unchecked. Resume, yes, absolutely. Cover letter, if that's available, yes, please include that for me. And also related applications. The related applications is helpful um, because it will tell you if someone has applied to your organization in the past. So it's good information for the manager to see when they receive that application. So just click on save to set that up. There we go. And my manager is here for this role, myself and Annie Walker, uh, will receive a copy of any incoming applicants for this enrollment specialist position. So very easy to set up, very easy to use. Maybe not something you use with every single position, but absolutely you're going to have managers who want to get that notification. And if it's a high priority position, you want instant notification, this is the way to go. Um, so definitely a handy little tool to be using right there. So that's number four, our auto forwards. Um, let's keep moving here. So we'll go over now to the menu over on the left. And I'm going to show you a tool here called Comparative Analysis. This is um, kind of a custom tool that our customers can use here. Each user can set up their own configuration as to what appears on the report. So usually, you're going to have things like the date of the application. And just note that you can also drag and drop the fields into place in the order that you would like them to appear. Status, disposition, um, has the applicant been rated? Let's move that down to the same right here. The summary sections. The summary questions are questions that appear on the application itself. And you can highlight them here as well as on the applicant profile page. So anything that you want to compare from, from different applications, you can choose that. And we can also do what we call an applicant score or a weighted search. And what this will do is um, allow us to add value to questions that appear on the application. So for example, how did you hear about the job? If it's an employee, I might rate you as a higher uh, ranked candidate because you're referred by someone that we know. So I can give that applicant a higher score. So I'll show you that in just a minute. We can also include work opportunity tax credit status. So I can include that as part of this report as well. The applicant distance, I have to say my boss absolutely loves the distance. It helps us know how far away someone lives from where the job is actually located. Doesn't matter if it's a remote job, absolutely. But if someone has a very long commute or they perhaps have to relocate, this is gonna indicate that for you. So update to save your settings. And then we can go in and we can take a look at the comparative analysis report. So we're only looking at the surface here. There's other things you can do like custom searching or adding in different tags to compare your candidate information. Um, but we're again, we're just skimming the surface for the purposes of this live event. So here is our report, comparative analysis report. And Let's be honest, there's just a lot of information to go through here. So let's make it easier on ourselves. Um, we'll go ahead and we'll do a search here. So I'm gonna include account exec, and we'll look at this particular role itself. So just note, you also can sort by statuses or any of these column headings uh, that we see on this report. So I wanna see who's rated higher uh, our highest, it's actually this, this person here, Waldo. So we can look at Waldo and we can see his desired salary. 
Why does he want to work for us? When is he available? Has he been previously employed? Now, previous employment, I might give them a higher score based on that response. But we can see here, um, applicant score, the highest one was Waldo. And I did mention the work opportunity tax credit a few minutes ago. So the work opportunity tax credit is a tax credit that gives employers um, up to $9,600 $9,600, actual number, if you're hiring people who are within a certain target group. The target groups, there's 10 of them. They include veterans, individuals with disabilities who have been referred by an agency, individuals who have been on food stamps, individuals who have been long-term unemployed, if someone falls into one of those categories and you happen to hire them, you may be eligible for a tax credit for hiring that person. So I'll, I'll talk a little bit about how we obtain that qualification in just a few minutes. All right, so at this point, I'm going to go back to our dashboard screen here. And I wanted to go in and take a quick look at the applicant profile page. So I'm actually just going to click here on new applications. And it pulls up my applicant profile. So on the profile, we can see everything about the application. So how do you heard about the job, our candidates contact information, the resume cover letter, all of that information resides here on this screen right here. But one of the things that iRecruit can do is allow you to communicate with multiple candidates. So let's say you close a position, you want to let the other people know that they were not selected for the job. So I'm just going to change the view of our screen and we're going to select, do select all on these candidates here. And I'm going to then go down to the bottom left and we're going to select contact applicants, process. And from here, now that I have a selected, selected list of applicants, so we can choose an email to send to all of these people. Now, I don't always recommend uh, just sending a rejection notice. There's certainly friendlier ways that you can uh, keep in touch with people. So for example, you can say, thank you, we're not hiring right now. Please follow us on LinkedIn, uh, see when our other positions become available. So there's definitely other things that you could do there. But in this case, we will send our not, not uh, selected email. The email itself comes from a template that you can customize, add your logo, make it look as good as you would like to. There goes my phone, um, bad timing. Let's click on contact applicants. Let's get rid of that phone right there. The contact applicant button just sends that, that message out there to our candidates. And if we look at any one of the applicants, we'll go with um, Anna at the top here. On her history, on that applicant profile, we'll always have a copy of any messages that get sent out to every application. So that was number six. That was the batch email, sending that out to the candidates that were not selected. But what about the people that you do hire? Let's go back to the work opportunity tax credit. Let's talk about that briefly before we talk about the onboarding section. So the work opportunity tax credit, as I mentioned, you can get up to $9,600 when you hire someone from the correct qualifying category. And as I said, there are 10 different work opportunity tax credit categories. Now, in iRecruit, um, and we're looking at the applicant view right here, this is an application. It's been completed. I'm just going to go ahead and sign our application so you can see what happens next. So this is um, Annie Walker, signature section here, and we'll submit our application. 
And after our application for this position is submitted, um, we screen all of the candidates so we can determine if they are potentially eligible for a tax credit if you decide to hire them. So it's good information to have. And if, you're, if you are familiar with the Work Opportunity Tax Credit, you know it's actually six pages of questions for your applicants. And what we have done here at iRecruit is, is we have simplified that six pages for you. So we've made it as simple as 10 questions long. So we can see is Annie Walker potentially eligible here? So I'm just going to answer these questions and we'll go ahead. We'll say she was previously unemployed and received unemployment compensation in Connecticut and then I'm going to go ahead and sign and submit this application. There we go and submit. So we get a confirmation number. At this point Annie Walker's application, it's all set. She's done her uh, tax credit form as well and obviously I've done this one before. Let's go ahead and we'll close that. So back on your iRecruit account and we see that we do have the one new application from Annie Walker and this will tell us, oh it didn't go through, that's because it's an older application. Um, it will normally tell you um, if the person is potentially qualified and again you also have the comparative analysis report that can give you that information as well. Now one of the most common questions we get about the work opportunity tax credit is, is this legal? Is it legal to do? And yes, it absolutely is. And just over a month ago, the Equal Opportunity Employment Commission actually issued a statement um, on that very topic. So um, I'll link to that um, in the comments on Facebook um, so that you know uh, exactly where to go to, to look up that information if you have any questions on it. So that's the Work Opportunity Tax Credit. And by the way, when you hire someone, um, we can also, this is obviously not a qualified person, but um, when you hire someone, we do collect the hours worked and the wages and their start dates so that we can calculate the maximum um, available tax credit for you. Um, up to $9,600 on the high end, but the average is probably closer to $2,400. But what you do with that is completely up to you. We like to think that it's a value add for you and it can actually help pay for your software investment um, with iRecruit. So one other thing I want to show you here in this section is that we can actually hire Annie Walker. So we can take Annie Walker, the applicant, and turn her into Annie Walker, our new hire. So I'm changing the status to hired. And at this point, I have three things happening immediately. First of all, my history is updated with the information that I have hired her. My new hire documents are now assigned to Annie Walker. So that typically includes your I-9, W-4, state tax form, anything else that you might include, a background check authorizations, it might include direct deposit, emergency contacts, those kind of things. And the third thing that happens is that Annie Walker will also receive an email message that lets her know that she has some documents to review for me. So this would be all of your pre-boarding or pre-hire information. And if we're logged back in as Annie Walker, we can look at check my status and she can see that she has 13 assigned documents um, within her account here. Okay, so we can go through any one of these documents. Um, 
to keep things simple, I'm just going to take a look at this harassment policy. And this is a simple example of a document. You want your new hires to read this review it, say that they understand it and agree to it. So she is just going to go ahead and sign off on this document. And once it has been signed off on and submitted here, um, it's going to be grayed out so it can no longer be edited at this point. That's my mistake there. Let me try that one more time. So yeah, so if someone does submit a document, by the way, and they um, have made a mistake, so let's say it's the W-4, they made a mistake on their withholding for any reason, you can reassign it back to them so that they can make um, corrections. But from your side of things, you can track all of that activity, so we'll be able to see what's been completed, what is still pending um, right here. Um, on your applicant profile. There are people, of course, who take far too long to complete your documents and they make your time to hire longer because they're taking too long. We can send reminders to your candidates to complete the documents, please. Uh, you can set that manually or you can do it automatically on a daily or you know, every couple of days, whatever schedule um, is appropriate for you. So we can create an online version of just about any type of document. So if you do have any questions about that, please feel free to reach out to us here at iRecruit. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and do a quick search here for number nine here. We're going to look at all jobs, um, fairly wide date range there, and all candidates, no matter what the state is. And let's see if we have someone that I can text here. So with the texting of an applicant, you do need their explicit permission, and that is part of the application. So if a candidate gives you their, uh, their cell phone number. The next question is, may we have your permission to text you at this number? And that is required if you are going to use texting with iRecruit. Um, so let me see, we do have a, that does not look like a cell phone number. So let me see, if we have another one here. We have one with a cell phone right here. And I am going to text Jessica. Now with this, you can use a uh, template. So you can just type directly into the box. Alternatively, you can create and um, use templates uh, with your candidates. Send text will send that message off to Jessica. And there's the history there. You can see I've done this a few times she can reply to that text from her phone. You will also receive a copy on your phone so you'll know instantly when someone is replying to you and also that history will be contained here within um, iRecruit and the applicant profile. If a candidate has not given you permission to do any texting, we won't see the texting tab and if you do get here accidentally, it will tell you explicitly you have not received permission so far. So you can always request permission if you'd like, and you can add that cell phone in here into the applicant profile if you would like to use that. All right, so that's um, nine out of 10 so far. We've looked at the dashboard, adding video. We've looked at sponsoring jobs. We've looked at auto forwarding. We've looked at how to compare applicants. We also looked at how to send a batch of emails to candidates, how to include the work opportunity tax credit, um, onboarding documents or pre-boarding, depending on how you would like to phrase that. And we've looked at texting. So one more thing that I'll show you here in iRecruit, this is our final item, is the exporter. 
No, iRecruit does have a number of reports already built into the menu. Now, although you can use those reports, you can sort them by um, position, by date range, by status, etc. You really can't edit them, although you can export them into Excel. If you would like to create a custom report, now a custom report might be built on one of your custom forms or custom questions. We have this little tool called the exporter and we use this to build reports on specific information. So for example, we have an onboarding report here. So let's take a look at this one. So this one includes the application date, the status, if it has been downloaded, the applicant's name, the company ID, the job that they're hired to, various organization levels. So whatever information is included in your iRecruit account, we can add into the report. So to give you a quick example of that, I'm going to select one of my um, web forms and we'll select, let's see what we have here. So I have emergency contact. So let's put emergency contact and our contact will take the person's name and we will take the relationship and we will take the phone number. Okay, so we can add that emergency contact information to this onboard report. Exporting the information, you choose the date range for the report and what type of file that you would like to have. So for us, most people are going to have a CSV file that would get emailed to you. So if I select export, you'd receive the, the link to the file uh, through your email address. So that is our overview, 10 things you did not know that you could do in iRecruit. My name is Lindsay Strong, and if anyone has any questions, uh, feel free to reach out to me at um, 860-269-0959. Or you can contact me through the iRecruit website. Thank you so much for watching our um, presentation today. And this is the first time I've gone live on Facebook. So fingers crossed that it went smoothly. Um, hope everyone has a great afternoon. Thank you so much.